The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. A story you'll only see right here on Fox. Last night, Fox's James Rosen broke the news that President Obama, the White House, and many Obama's senior advisors knew within minutes that the attack on the consulate in Benghazi was terror, not a protest in response to that often cited video. Here's how it went down the night of September 11th, 2012. 9.42 p.m., Benghazi time. Benghazi consulate gets attacked. Within 18 minutes, General Dempsey and Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta were told by General Ham about the attack again, underlining attack, not protest. Within an hour, 11 p.m., there was a meeting with President Obama, General Dempsey, and Secretary uh, of Defense Leon Panetta. So Obama's made aware of that 11, at 11 p.m. Benghazi time. 1.45 a.m., Ambassador Stevens is declared dead. Two hours and 15 minutes later, Woods and Doherty are declared dead as well. 10 a.m., the bodies of Ambassador Stevens, Sean Smith, Tyrone Woods, and Glenn Doherty are flown from Benghazi to An Andrews Air Force Base. Jay Carney was asked about the new revelations in the briefing room just a few hours ago. For many days after the president, but you specifically at that podium, said we did not know whether it was a terror attack. Why, if these military leaders testified to Capitol Hill that they knew it was an attack, almost immediately, why did you continue? Well, of course it was an attack. The facility was attacked. Right, there was never any doubt about, come on, Ed. I mean, I, I know it, there's a desire here to but that's what you color said. outside that's the lines, but this is just not factual. Coloring outside the lines. Listen to a few in the Obama administration coloring way outside the lines, given what we now know from General Ham's damning testimony. Listen. Let's be clear. This, these protests were in reaction to a video that had spread to the region. We have no uh, information to suggest that it was a pre-planned uh, attack. We've seen rage and violence directed at American embassies over an awful internet video that we had nothing to do with. What sparked the recent violence was the airing on the internet of a very hateful, very offensive video. All right, KG, let's do the ladies first. KG, the, one, the most offensive one for me was when Hillary Clinton at Andrews Air Force Base with the four caskets behind her mm -hmm. went ahead and blamed the video, knowing very well at that moment that it had nothing to do with the video. And it was, in fact, a, an attack. Now we, we have proof. Well, this is damning information. And I just want to know how many lies do you have to take to be a gold member of the Liars Club? Because all of those people that you just showed, one lie after the next, have a very loose relationship with the truth. They don't care. Despite facts and information that they had at their disposal at the time that this happened and they sold lies to the American people and it's shameful because American blood was spilled and it's what we've been saying from the beginning on this program. You know, A.T., General Ham testified under oath to Congress that it was 18 minutes after the attack started that, he, that Leon Panetta and General Dempsey w were notified. That's right. And we just saw Hillary Clinton uh, state misinformation. It looks like her State Department had it right. So as you mentioned, Eric, just minutes after, the State Department Operations Center said that it was a terror attack, and then moments later they said that it was uh, Ansar al-Sharia. Mm -hmm. We know that General Petraeus at the time, he had a memo that said that it was uh, al-Qaeda linked. And we know from Stephen Hayes, a Fox News contributor, um, from his reports in uh, the Weekly Standard, that there was a specific meeting uh, on Friday, September 14th, where Victoria Nunlin at the State Department expressed concern that her supervisors uh, were not happy with the initial reports that were out saying that it was al-Qaeda. And so she and Ben Rhodes got into a meeting, we've not heard from Ben Rhodes yet, changed these talking points um, to say that it was a video, and it was that Sunday that they went out and perpetuated the lie. Nobody in the military ever said it was a video. It was changed way after the fact, and it was done deliberately for political points. Yeah, and, and Greg, in fact, uh, General Hamm was testifying. He was also asked two or three times, when you say attack, you mean attack, right? Mm -hmm. You're not talking about a protest. And he was very clear and, cons and, and precise about calling it attack, not a, not a protest. Yeah, I, I am one of the people that would easily forgive an administration over confusion over an attack like this and understanding that the things are happening incredibly quickly and, uh, and, and there, there's no nefarious things going on. However, there, if there's an inclination to blame a video, 
How easy is that blame taken by the media? Why does that happen? Is it because there is an environment mm. uh, that fosters a belief that when there is a conflict between East and West, generally the West is the Goliath. We are the ones responsible for such things by, uh, uh, by fostering uh, uh, an Islamophobia. This is somehow our fault. Therefore, you have a filmmaker who is in jail. Uh, for violating parole because of his alias, you would be an you would have an alias too when you see Theo Van Gogh's dead body. Uh, the fact is, all the filmmakers that are defending Roman Polanski or defending Woody Allen, both perverts, uh, aren't defending this guy. Uh, it it who's makes still no in jail. yeah, who's still in jail? I mean, the point is, there were two reasons why they blamed the video. One is to win an election, and number two, it's easier to censor than capture. Right. Hey, well, yeah. Greg makes a very good point. Uh, there's no a one. lot of reasons why they may have. Clinton, <clears throat> Carney, Susan Rice all fell in line. Did they fall in line out of, um, I don't know, a, a, a feeling that they needed to, or did they fall in line because they were told to? I think I wonder about that around this table. I mean, it seems to me everybody here is falling in line like, oh, my God, the sky is falling, conspiracy theory, well, and let's all facts. buy into this grand conspiracy theory. Let's get back to the facts here. The facts are that right now Carter Ham said... He was never told to withdraw. All he did was he said, you know what, guys, this looks like an attack. It looks like it was something that was planned. There was some foresight here. Attack. He didn't say that it was attached to al-Qaeda. He didn't say any of that. He didn't say a word like that. But, 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 but he, when he was pressed, they specifically said, General Ham, was it a protest? Did it look like a protest? Did you ever even mention protest? And he said, absolutely not. It no, he's talking specifically about Benghazi. Remember that the video did spark mass protest in places like Tunisia, in Egypt, these there were real protests but in response to the, the video. Point is that he so, no, and then Gen let me finish. General Ham then goes on to say, American intelligence did not suggest there was any any imminent threat of a an attack coming in Benghazi. So he wasn't on guard against it. But when he saw what had taken place, he said that looked like a pre-planned attack. Yeah. Uh, by the uh, way, uh, yeah. can we blame Lone Survivor for the shooting in the movie theater? What do you mean? The, the, uh, the, the shooting that took place where the guy shot the guy You're over texting. You're giving him ideas, Greg. Yeah, no, but that's my point. Saying. It's the same thing. Um, uh, so Andrew, there's no nexus between let, let's the talk two, but we can arbitrarily pick it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, arbitrary is a good word here because I think there's a lot of arbitrary picking going on. So, <laughs> one, of the other, one of the other things that did come out of uh, General Ham's testimony is that the, the, the consulate was grossly underprepared for any sort of attack. Um, who do we pin that one on? You have to pin that on the State Department well, and the White House. Think about it. The ambassador himself was asking for increased security months before there had been two attacks prior to that third attack that happened on September 11th. I would think that considered U.S. soil, this is what our embassies are and our consulates, that President Obama would have had to know that two weeks prior a hole was blown so large into the wall that 40 men could walk through that President Obama was alerted to that. Why the British embassy closed and ours stayed open and they didn't give increased security when the ambassador was asking for it himself is absolutely shameful. Clinton was friends with him or at least claimed to be friends with Ambassador Stevens. And by the way, there were over 30 CIA agents on the ground that night. They knew exactly what was going on. To say it was spontaneous, when, think about this. The ambassador went from Tripoli to the consulate back in, in Benghazi to a safe house. Do you think anybody doing something spontaneously would have that kind of intelligence? That's yeah. no. No, no. That's no, no, the no, problem. I mean, There's so much more to this, and they knew yes. it at the time, and now some of the facts and truth are coming out, and hopefully other people are going to have courage you, you, to tell you what happened. You make a very good point. Um, James Rosen is going to break some more details tonight. I did six, uh, six o'clock on special report, and he's going to focus in on what the White House knew. So all this they didn't know or did they, what they understood was accurate. We have to be careful because there's a lot more coming out in, in about 50 minutes. Well, I'm all for it. Bring it all. I mean, I say lay it all on the table. Look, there have been extensive hearings. Hillary Clinton, I know she's your demon of the moment, but I mean, Hillary Clinton has testified about this in front of yeah. hard-nosed Republicans. What, 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 what difference does it make? No, no. No, and, hey, but they asked her hard questions, and she, she testified. Let me just say, Representative Roby, a Republican on the House Armed Services Committee, she said, look, no one was held back. Nothing happened here that you would say, oh, scandal. Diff no, no, that was a different topic, Juan. No, that, and that, that, was, that was when she was asked, could, were there assets available yes. to help them? Remember, oh, remember, one of the conspiracy this theory was, Juan, this oh, topic, the military never, the let's military was held back. They didn't, Juan, weren't allowed to let's go. Let's be fair. This topic was whether or not the White House knew, knew it was an attack in or Again, not in advance. They That's knew. separate from whether... Uh, attack, uh, but attack right. is not conspiracy by al-Qaeda who we, attacked right. us on 9-11. Well, we don't know.
And maybe we'll find out oh, in 50 minutes. That'd be um, the second topic of the block, the IRS, we now find out uh, the Justice Department is not going to prosecute the right. IRS for, for their, their, their yeah. targeting conservative groups. Yeah, the best thing about it is the person in charge of this investigation is a big o Obama donor. <laughs> I, apparently, Michelle was busy and they couldn't track down Oprah. Where <laughs> Clooney was doing a film. Bo the dog, they couldn't find him. Perhaps he was eaten. Uh, the, oh, IRS, the IRS <laughs> case is the equivalent of a corrupt cop blocking a crime scene and saying, nothing to see here. The White House makes the mob look like the teletub Teletubbies. The uh, Obama administration will go down as the anything goes administration, mainly because the media lets them get away with everything. They're as submissive as a blind hooker. Mm. Wow. Bring it, Bring it around. Uh, I would say this is the political equivalent of defining deviancy down, right? The Justice Department has gone after whether or not Roger Clemens took steroids, and they right. won't go after this. Um, it's absolutely shameful. And by the way, this woman, this donor that Greg mentioned, didn't even bother for seven months to talk to the victims. So how do you do an investigation there when you're not no even talking to the victims? It's an invisible, imaginary investigation by the Holder and Justice Department. Can they just Once arbitrarily again. say we're not going to investigate this and Congress can't lean on it? They've been doing do it, that? what, for five, going on no, six right, years. Right, but can't, but, they but shouldn't, specifically but they can. The they, have, they have the power and the ability to walk away, turn a blind eye, to so not assign Congress, investigators. Can Congress investigate Well, themselves? they've been trying to do it. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.